What's up, you guys? So my Instagram has now turned into carpool karaoke. <laughs> I feel like all I'm doing is like lives in my car, which is all I've been doing lately. But um, I guess I've been a little busy. So this is the time that I find to share with you guys. Um, and this one, I had, I was on two podcast interviews today. And so I just have like a lot of thoughts stirring in my mind from that. And one of them was with, both were with other health coaches. And um, one of them, he was saying that he, you know, was kind of anti-keto. And the reasons he's telling me, I'm like, I get it. I understand that there's a lot of health coaches out there that are like, Ur, because um, there's a lot of indoctrination out there. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about in this secret to fat loss is the topic of this live. I want to talk about like basically brainwashing, elitism, indoctrination, all these belief systems. It's, it's tough right now, you guys, because, and I just had a client tell me this today too. She's like, I've just been feeling so defeated. I have had so many clients tell me this. I just am feeling so overwhelmed and confused and exhausted because I'll listen to one podcast and I'll hear something. And so for like two days, I'll go carnivore. And then I hear somebody else talk about how important carbs and honey and whatever is. And so for two days, then I start doing that. And then I start taking some supplement because I heard somebody say it was good. And then I hear somebody else say it was bad. And then I stop, you know. Does that sound familiar? So um, if you're following a lot of health accounts, if you're like a health geek and you're trying to learn from people online, this is my message for you, okay? This is like the secret. If especially most of the, most of you are trying to lose fat, let's be real. Okay, here's the secret. Whatever gets you to be at a calorie deficit in a way that you can maintain is the secret to fat loss for you. That's the secret. So for some people, that's keto. For some people, that's not keto. For some people, that's a really high fiber low fat ish diet for some people that's tracking macros for some people it's carnivore whatever's going to do it for you in a way that you like like I know a guy that all he eats is steak and dark chocolate <laughs> if you see it shout out but that's he likes that I I would die on that regimen I like I don't even really like steak that much sorry don't unfollow me because I said that <laughs> You thought it was a pill? Yes, I have a new product, Garen. A new product. Um, it's, link is in my bio. It's a secret to fat loss. <laughs> I don't do that crap to you guys. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Although, I did have a call with my clients last night about, like, kind of fat burners. There are some things that kind of help a little bit, but they only turn the needle, like, this much on top of what you're already doing. But <sighs> that's another live. But I just want to share, like, if you're the kind of person that loves fruits and fruits and vegetables and healthy carbohydrates, and like that's that's your jam, and you can eat those all day long, like keto long term is probably not going to be a solution for you unless you do it. And you're like, what? I didn't know. I freaking love this. That could happen. Probably means you have blood sugar dis dysregulation or inflammation or something like that. But the secret is like it's so important right now in this information age that you bring it back inside of you bring the power back inside of you i often tell my clients i got issues tell my clients like i that i feel like my job so often is to give my clients scientific backing for what their intuition was already telling them so if you're trying to like lose body fat and you like hate your approach, you're never going to make it. You might make it temporarily, but you're going to go back to what you perceive as normal. So you have to find a new normal that you love. So for me, for example, like I love things like, like Greek yogurt, um, like apples, sweet potatoes, um, vegetables, big, huge veggie stir fries, egg scrambles. I love stuff like that. I can eat. I've been eating that for years. I look forward to it. Oatmeal even. So that's why like being long-term, that's one reason why being long-term keto doesn't work for me. The other reason is athletic performance. I go freaking bananas in the gym. I perform better when I have some carbohydrates. I'm also a believer. Yeah, I, but sorry to say, but I'm a, not sorry to say, but for those of you that this is hard to hear, I am a believer that fiber is important. I am. I think it's amazing for your gut microbiome, your diversity in your gut, and for healthy neurochemistry as well. My sister has leaky gut. There's so much info. Yeah, too much. What would you suggest? 
I would suggest having her go to one functional medicine doctor that she trusts in her gut, in, in her gut, <laughs> that she trusts, right? That she has like a good vibe for that person. She can tell that they are someone who is speaking truth, not trying to be right, right? And you can kind of tell when you work with people, if they ask a lot of questions and they're like, hmm, hmm, that's that's something I look for when, when I'm talking to somebody because I can see they're open-minded and looking for solutions. Not like, let me ego blast you. Like if you have a, any kind of mental health professional or health professional and they're like ego blasting you with how educated and knowledgeable they are run. I can't stand that. That to me, that's like, okay, so you're not open-minded at all. And you think you're always right. Got it. I'm going to go. <laughs> um, all right. New to you and watching, reading, listen to all your stuff. Thanks girl. Appreciate that. I got some good podcasts coming up. Um, I'm doing an interview again with Barton Scott, who does the hair mineral analysis that I do with my clients tomorrow. So that'll be coming out soon. Um, if you guys have any requests for podcast guests that you would like me to get on Inside Out Health, let me know. Um, I got the owner of the X3 bar coming on soon. If anybody travels, that's a really cool little thing. Um, all right. So, yeah, going back to... Like, think of the times, honestly, in your life where you've been, like, at a healthy body weight that you like and it felt kind of effortless for you. That, that'll that give you some clues, right? It's not ever going to be effortless because we live in a society in which we never move and we can eat as much food as we want and everything is processed, little calorie bombs that taste amazing. So that's really hard, <laughs> okay? It's hard for all of us. That's one thing I'll say, too, is, like, Stop living under the delusion that it's easy for other people and it's hard for you. It's hard for everybody. We're all like, we're all destined to be out of shape because of the way that our society is set up, at least here in the U.S. So, um, let's see. I only do banana before the gym. Yeah, if that if that if that feels good to you. You guys want to know something interesting about bananas? If you guys haven't listened, speaking to my podcast, if you haven't listened to the episode with Kara Collier. She is the nutritionist at um, NutriSense, which is a continuous glucose monitor company. Dude, what they're finding out about data for people's glucose blood sugar responses are freaking insane. Like we're blowing all this glycemic index and blood sugar response and highly glycemic foods and all this stuff. We're learning that it's so individual. It's not even funny. And it started because one of my clients, she messaged me and she was like, dude, I get a way higher blood sugar response from strawberries than I do bananas. Right? And so we started digging into this. Just, it's Continuous glucose monitors are cool. I would definitely, that's like a biohack I would definitely do for yourself. It is so freaking cool. There's a link in my bio for it. Um, NutriSense has like a $25 off coupon for you guys. It, you can't do it on the two week one. It has to be like, I think a month or two months or something like that. It's so cool though. You stick this little monitor on the back of your arm. It's, it, you won't even feel it go in. It's just barely under your skin surface. Um, and you have an app on your phone and it's constantly tracking your blood sugar, even while you're sleeping and stuff. And like, I've shared this before, but I like, I was like on a first date <laughs> and I was like nervous, I guess my blood sugar was like super high. All I ate was a salad. I was like, Oh shoot. <sighs> Cause I was nervous. And then like, um, running my blood sugar was going freaking crazy high from running all that stuff. So that's really cool. And you can see how your body responds to different foods instead of just taking people's word for it. This is what I love about biohacking and like all the things that we're learning now. Like you don't have to just like have general information and guess. There's so much you can learn about what's going on inside your body. That's really cool. So highly recommend one of those. Um, but then, okay, let's get back into like dogma and just believing what you hear because a lot of like what's out there right now is like having a blood sugar response is bad. You know, any insulin response at all means you're going to get fat, which is totally bogus. You should have a insulin response after you eat carbohydrates and your body should be able to bring them back down. If you have chronically elevated blood sugar, that means you're probably having a hard time with insulin sensitivity. Try not to. Yeah. I'm trying to keep it really simple, but just in a, on a base level, if you have a blood sugar response and it comes back down over the next hour, like that's normal. That doesn't mean like you're going to get fat. Those car, those carbs could just go into your liver and muscles for glycogen and be stored for energy later. So yeah. Anyway, that's a cool little biohack. Um, what is my number one fat loss hack? All right. If you just tune, tune in my number one fat loss hack is 
do whatever approach makes it easiest for you to be in a calorie deficit. That is it. So all this talk about like calories don't matter is BS. Do the type of calories you eat change everything? Yes. You're going to look really different than if you ate like lean proteins and veggies and high quality foods. Your, your body composition will look different. Your brain health will be different. Your hormone health will be different. Your inflammation markers will all be different. Like your internal health will be completely different and aesthetically you will look different as well. So types of calories matter. But in, in terms of what I'm trying to get at is this like idea that if you just eat healthy, it doesn't matter. You can eat as many calories as you want. Like Maybe if you're a person who tends to not overeat, but if you're a person who tends to overeat and you're just eating healthy and you're not losing any weight, like <laughs> the writing is on the wall. And so you're going to, and so this, I guess this message is more for people who have like bigger appetites. <laughs> so if you're like me, like I have to be smart, super freaking smart about the food choices that I make if I want to be lean. That's it. doesn't mean I can't ever have joy and pleasure and my food, but for the most part, yeah, do I bulk up my food with freaking vegetables? Mm-hmm. Is fiber my friend? Mm-hmm. Is lean protein my friend? Yes. Do I avoid processed foods as much as possible? Yep. Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to win. I'm trying to make this work for me long term. So, yeah, just do. If keto is that approach for you, if high carb is that approach for you, if you know, super fibrous foods, whatever it is, and I'm telling you, you already know telling you, you already know. And the biggest thing that I will emphasize is process, no matter what approach you do, you start throwing process stuff in there, everything will start going downhill. Whether that's keto snacks or protein bars all the time, it just adds up. You know, it's, it's better than freaking oatmeal cream pies, <laughs> but it's still not going to help you in the fat loss game that much. It's, it makes it hard. Unless you're somebody who tends to under eat. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff as much. Um, do you track macros when not training for a competition? No. This has been so freaking hard for me. I'm not going to lie. I have realized that I just don't care that much. Like I just, I'm kind of in this flow where I eat healthy most of the time. If I want a little something or that's not like super healthy here and there, I'll just have it. You know, I am not a purist. I am not a perfectionist. I am not manic about like the food that's going into my mouth. Um, I just try to eat real, you know, I try to be mindful of it, but I'm not like, I don't know. I'm not a maniac about it. So this being like super strategic about my food, I was having a little bit of a pity party this afternoon. I was so freaking hungry and I was like, Ugh. so annoying that my, my response when I can't eat what I want to eat is I'm freaking annoyed. It just feels annoying. I'm like, Ugh. And it's cool. It's cool to see where my mind goes. It's cool to watch your mind. My mind goes usually at something like this. Why am I even doing this? Right? Who's ever had that thought? Why am I even doing this? This is so dumb because I want to, I want out of the discomfort. Right? I've learned that lesson from running too. Once you, when you're like want out of discomfort, you're like, well, why am I even doing this? Do I find alcohol even in small amounts stalls fat loss? Well, it does. <laughs> I mean, your liver has to process the alcohol first. So it's not going to be doing anything else until it does that. It's temporary, but it's also inflammatory. So you're the next day, you're going to feel like crap. You're not going to be able to perform as well. Your mood's going to be down. So the likelihood of making f poor food decisions the next day goes up as well. So yeah, it definitely doesn't do any favors. I've had it like recently, like two or three times, which is pretty rare for me unless I'm like having a lot of, it's just social engagements. Um, and I just, I don't, I don't like alcohol personally. And yeah, it definitely like, it definitely makes you feel like crap the next day and it does not do you any favors long term, but yeah, it will temporarily, temporarily hold fat loss too. Um, but so does all food, <laughs> all food stalls fat loss. <laughs> all right. I think that's it guys any questions rachel gregory what's up girl we got a podcast tomorrow we gotta talk me and rachel see things the same all right friends 
Have a great night. Just remember, in this information age where everybody's got a freaking opinion, please run it through your filter of truth. Please ask yourself in here, like, does that really feel like that's going to work for me? Or am I getting in this frantic frenzy because somebody said I should do it like that and I respect them and I'm just going to do it and it's going to be really hard and horrible and I'm going to hate it, but got to do it. Like, it shouldn't be like that. It should feel like, oh, I can do that. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. It should be a little bit more of that energy. Take that approach. All right. And then also like the more you can bulk up your food with vegetables, the easier it's going to be because you're going to be really full on fiber, food volume. And you're going to have so many nutrients. Your body's not going to be looking for more nutrients in food. So that's definitely a big, that is a huge thing. The more, it's basically for me, I feel like the more vegetables I eat, the leaner I am. It's pretty simple. And if you want to get all woo-woo into plant intelligence and shit, I can go there too. <laughs> but I really, I, if you just look at it from a micronutrient standpoint, I do feel like smarter when I'm eating healthier. Yeah. All right, friends. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you guys joining my drive with me. I'm heading ice skating with Nick. Maybe I'll share some in my stories. My super awesome ice skating moves. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Have a great night.